Want more money? Want to get into shape? Want a loving relationship? Okay, so why don't you have these things right now? The answer is habits. Your habitual behavior and thoughts are keeping you stuck right where you are. So how to get past your habits? You've got to open your routine to different thoughts and actions. When you do this, you start to get different results. It really is that simple. But most people don't stick with the changes long enough to benefit from the results. This is where the habit formula comes into place. The habit formula looks at the origin of habits and how they form. Then it takes the next step in showing you how to hang in there long enough to see the results you want. Want to learn more? Go to thehabitformulabook.com and grab your free copy. That's right, it's free! Go to thehabitformulabook.com. Find out how hundreds of other people around the world have used the habit formula to get the results they want. You don't need to be Einstein to figure this out. Go to thehabitformulabook.com today. Hey everybody, you know what time it is. It's lunchtime with the Habit Master. I'm your host, Dr. Stephanie Aldrich, and I help people change their bad habits. When you change your habits, you change your life. Today's the basics. Thursday, it's one of my favorite days of the week because I don't work in the office tomorrow. And also, I get to think about things that I want to change in my life, um, things that I have changed in my life, and then I bring them to you guys so that maybe it'll help you. If I can provide a tip, a trick, some kind of method or formula to help you guys in whatever we're talking about here in the, these episodes, then I know it feel, makes me feel good and that I've passed it on to somebody else. Today we're going to talk about this four-letter word that every American, sorry, every American has an issue with, and that is debt, right? So um, I went over some statistics and just to give you, you know, some rough information about it, but the five tips that I'm going to share with you today are tips that I personally have used. This is what I've been taught of from my mother who was in charge of the, the household budget and also um, from my grandparents. So I have two sets of grandparents, right? My mother's side of grandparents and my father's side of grandparents. It seems like my father's side of gran uh, my father's side uh, parents were the ones that um, you know kept their debt small, very frugal with their money, but yet when my grandfather finally passed away, uh, he was a multimillionaire and nobody really knew. We knew that he was, you know, a, a, a good saver of money and investor in that, but we didn't know how much until after he passed away. Now, I don't want to pass away and leave my son, you know, all of this money that I can't myself enjoy. I'm not ever saying that, right? You gotta enjoy your life. You gotta, you know, go out and have some fun, have some experience in life. You know, what? it's not worth anything if you don't, right? But what I've learned is you also have to prepare. You have to plan ahead. And you do need to prioritize how you're spending the extra money that you have or even the money that you think is a fixed budget your fixed expenses. Are they really fixed? Could you live in a, a cheaper area of town? Could you live in a smaller house? Could you not buy designer brand shoes? Could, th there's a lot of ways that a fixed expense you know, maybe you cut out cable and you do Hulu or, you know, you get satellite or something like that. There's always different options that sometimes we say, well, you know, I'm standing firm on that and I'm not giving that up. But in reality, you really could. 
anything could be negotiated and there's tons of options for all of the expenses that we have you know you can prepay for your your gas and utility bills right um there's companies out there that do that and pass the savings along to you and i've done that myself here at the business and at home um you know there's uh ways to get rid of debt that you can save the money that you were going to put on that debt uh and interest on that debt right because that's really the name of the game and the killer of most americans um, extra money is interest payments but if you invest the money you can actually start having dividends and interest and expansion and appreciation work in your favor instead of against you and that's where i want you to start you know tweaking your mind tweaking your thoughts on debt and money and budgets i know that's a horrible word uh the book i'm writing now um i'm currently working on it's called the squirrel method and we're talking right now i was writing the uh, money chapter and we were talking a little bit about budgets a little bit about debt and i didn't really want to get into specifics but i'm like you know what there's too much advice out there that really is just generic advice well don't have debt and if you do it needs to be business debt or something that's going to produce income well that's fine and dandy but what happens when you have to go to college right you, you want to go to college because you want to you know have a certain type of you know work in a certain field or industry and you know you you need money for that well you don't have any right so then you have to have a student loan and how do you pay that off how do you do those kind of things and pay it off early so that you're not retiring and still paying college debt so i was looking on debt.org on the internet and here's just some quick statistics and then we're going to get into these five tips um, that I'm going to give you to get out of debt. Um, the average American um, has 82, almost $8,300 in debt. So everyone is about that. I know myself, I'm not though. Um, and we're talking consumer debt, credit card debt, okay? Uh, total U.S. consumer debt. Now this includes mortgages, which everybody has. I myself still have one. Uh, auto loans, I still have one. Uh, one truck is paid off, one car is not. Uh, credit cards um, and student loans. So two of those I'm, I'm out, but the other two I still have. That accounts in the United States for $13.5 trillion, okay? So that's a lot of money that we're paying interest on because the big bank said, come here, I'll give you some money. But even though you might have gotten a, a great mortgage deal, it's like mine's 3.25%, right? That's still 3.25% plus inflation, which is usually around 3%. So every year I'm paying 6% on that, um, on that debt. And it's like you can never get ahead, right? A, a great stock or, you know, even um, my real estate investments right now, they're only paying me 4.5%. Um, as the properties appreciate, obviously that's going to get a lot more, but... You know, you, you got to think of, you know, you're putting yourself in a hole if you're spending the money that you don't have. So the more frugal you are with your money, do those people that you're giving that money to, do they deserve your money? How hard did you work? How hard did you save? Do you really, 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 really want that? Do you really want to go to the movies? Or could you rent a movie for half the price or even less than that because you're not buying snacks. You're eating stuff out of your house, right? Do you really need to go to that, you know, get season tickets for the Indians when they stink, right? They didn't even make the playoffs this year. Why would you spend money? Now, if you're a corporate company, right, you're a corporation and you buy season tickets so that you can you know, give to your sales team or, you know, executives and they wine and dine people and take them to games. That's a business expense. That's an entertainment business expense. I can totally understand that. However, you're buying season tickets to the Browns who still, even with all this incredible talent and all the hype and all that, they've won two games this year. You're going to spend all of that money to go sit outside, drink lousy beer, eat fatty foods unless you're on keto and that's great but most people aren't 
eat fatty foods, and then bear the weather, because it's an outdoor stadium, for all of that money. When you could have paid off some debt, been free and clear, and then taken that money and invested it in something. You can watch the games for free on television. Doesn't cost you a dime, right? I, I watch them until I get fed up and then I turn the channel, right? Or do something else with my time. So something to think about is how can you think about and prioritize how you're spending your money? Who deserves the hard-earned money that you've put your time, you've sacrificed, you've sacrificed energy and m mentality, um, you've sacrificed time with your, your family, all of this stuff, who deserves your money? You really need to think about that. I know I think about it all the time and the more I think about it, the less I end up spending it. Ask anybody and I'm the last person that's going to go out and buy new clothes or new this or new that because, I mean, I've had the same underwear even for you know 10 years because it still works. It still covers up the parts that it's supposed to cover up and you know we're good to go. Why do I need new underwear all the time, right? So you have to think, prioritize where your money's going because we all only have so much, right? You get a salary, get an income, maybe you're on commission and can increase that. And you know, all of these episodes, especially on Business Wednesdays, I talk about ways that you can increase your business, new customers and communication and all of that. But basics Thursday, we gotta think about today is money day, today's debt day. So we need to be selfish today. We need to think, how do I wanna spend my money on me and my family? right yes everybody deserves a vacation that is correct but have you done other things with that money previously that the credit card companies are like yeah 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 i'll give you credit and here's you know 18 percent interest rate on it because if so then you don't deserve a vacation not yet you got to get that stuff tackled and you got to get rid of it so that then you can enjoy things you can start saving I know for me remember the envelope system if you tune in on Mondays we, it's mommy, mommy Mondays and we talk about I'm starting to really focus on um, the envelope system my mom taught me that if you have a certain thing I just did it with tires last week I didn't have enough quite enough time to save for the whole thing uh, and I'll pay it off the credit card here in two weeks but uh, I had half of it paid for. And just by putting like 20 bucks at a time, every week, 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks, and then I had half of it already. Like you have to be disciplined and you have to plan things and we're gonna kinda get into some tips and tricks on that. Um, the average American has at least three credit cards. Ohio, so this is just the state, um, struggles more with student loan debt than any other debt. So uh, we're pretty good on mortgages. We're not too bad. We're actually lower than the average for auto loans, lower than the average on mortgages and credit cards. But for some reason, our student loan debt is outrageous and a lot bigger than most states in the United States. Um, the average debt is $30,000. Um, I know for me, I was $178,000 coming out of uh, dental school back in 99. And nowadays, these guys are double that easily. And for as much as we make, um, that's like buying a really nice house. You know, wh why should it cost that much? 8% of Ohio residents have student loans over the age of 50. Bankruptcies, there were a, a 1.4 million bankruptcies last year, or two years ago, 2017. You know, that really dings your credit. You have a bankruptcy. I think it's like seven years or something. I know for me, my credit score is over 800. It's been like that for a long, long time. When it wasn't very good, it was just because I borrowed so much money for uh, for the business and then for a house that you know you, you have to have that ratio to income proportion. You know they look at that kind of thing, and it was just too high, right? Even though I paid every bill, never missed anything. I'm great about that. But you know now that 
my income ratio is higher than my debt ratio, um, you know, my credit score is wonderful. And it always has been, but um, that's just how they measure things. So let's get into five ways that I use, and I still use today. I was looking at, um, I have three business loans. One is for equipment, well, all three of them are for, two are for equipment, and one is for a consultant that we hired a couple years ago. So two of those will be gone next year, and the other one, um, maybe a couple years, I'll just pay it off early, right? But prior to that, so this was uh, 2016, I actually had zero business loan debt, and all I had was my mortgage payment, okay? You can do it. Uh, I took out a little debt, even though I had money I could have spent, but interest rates were so low back then. I think my, all of my stuff is 3%, even though, yes, we just talked about it. It's 3% plus inflation, 3%. But for the business, we're growing. So, you know, I, I can handle that. And I can write off all those interest payments on, uh, on the business. So in reality, I'm not paying that much because I can deduct all of that interest that I so I don't have to pay tax on it. When it's consumer debt and personal debt, you do pay on that. So something to think about. You're really getting a double whammy when you have credit card debt because um, you've got to pay not only the interest, but then you have to pay tax and all kinds of stuff on that stuff. So um, let's talk about five ways that I myself have gotten myself out of debt. Um, number one is you're making weekly extra payments weekly extra payments on whatever debt okay so I, I'm gonna give you some um, statistics on a on a loan that I had I don't remember quite like the actual amount because this has been like 15 years ago but this is what I did I know I had a four-year loan And I know what my payments were. I was doing $7,600, yes, $100 a month, not a year, a month, to pay off my business debt, okay? And I had renegotiated that. It was at 4.75%. The first loan that I got out of dental school in 19, no, it was 2000, it was March 2000, it was 11%. And then I had another one for 9%. Even though my credit was good, but because I had no prior experience, you know, I'm a new dentist and I don't know anything, right? Plus I had all that student loan debt, almost a couple hundred thousand. Uh, that was my two first loans. So what I did was I combined them and I got one for half that amount, which is still kind of high, but it was doable, right? So it was a four-year loan. Altogether, it was... Um, 364000 Now, of course, this is with interest at all. I, I just don't know what the original amount was. Whatever, you got to subtract that, and it doesn't really matter. But anyway, so it was over $350,000, right? Now, at the end of the loan, the agreement was I had a balloon payment of 80000 that was due. And I was like, oh, crap. You know, I'll be paid off with the loan, but then I'm gonna have this balloon payment still. What the hell, right? This is what I did. What I did was I started making extra weekly payments. So I did another $400 a week because that's about all I could afford, right? I kept my um, income stable, not that much but I could pay an extra $400 a week. And over the course of um, the 12 months, so that's, um, you know, whatever it is, times um, four years, that uh, equaled $83,200. So I don't think I made the last, you know, so many payments, right? But I had it. I paid that off and I didn't have that large amount. So when it came due to the last payment on this, 
I don't even think I owed that last payment because I had overpaid here and it took it or it might have been a couple grand or something. I was so relieved when that happened. And the smart thing that I did was this $7,600 and this $400 a week, instead of saying, woohoo, I'm going to keep it and I'm going to do whatever and buy a bigger house and you know, whatever, you know what I did? I started investing in my retirement plan. So every month, you know, as a small business owner, I own 100% share of my business. So what do I do? I give myself, and if you're an LLC, you can be taxed as an S Corp, okay? Ask your accountant how to do that because mine does it brilliantly. So what I do is I give myself a salary and I obviously am taxed on that. Okay, and being a small business owner, I have to pay FICA on that, right? Which is um, your social security and all that crap. Which is all a bunch of self-employment tax. I, I, I don't even know what all that stuff is. But whatever, ask your accountant, right? I'm not an accountant, whatever. I just pay whatever she tells me. So that gets taxed FICA up to 150,000 or whatever. Then I pay myself a weekly um, retirement, which is that loan payment. And then monthly, I mean, I could do all of it weekly, but I just do it monthly because then I know that I have that extra month. Monthly, I have a monthly retirement too, which is that balloon extra payment. Now, over the course of the last 10 years, what has happened? Everything has increased, right? Business has increased. Now, we're pretty stable right now, and that's okay. I can handle us working a little bit less, making just the, the, the same amount. I'm getting older. You know, I, I have a, a family. Everyone else here has families and grandchildren and stuff. So, you know, time is okay if we're just keeping steady, right? But all of these payments have gone up too. I haven't kept it. I haven't given myself a raise, I don't know, at least five, six years, right? Um, maybe even more, I'd have to ask my accountant, but I haven't. Why? Because I can pay myself the dividend. That's what you call it. So you have a salary and then the dividend. Now, this, you don't pay FICA on. You don't have to pay any tax on that, okay? This is all pure money. Don't ask me how that happens, ask your accountant for that, right? But I can pay myself the dividends, which is all of this, okay? All of this stuff, I pay weekly and I pay monthly. And I'll touch that money. That money goes directly into retirement. So I have two retirement plans. One is real estate and one is um, a whole life policy. Uh, I'm gonna try to get my friend Amanda on. Um, she's looking through regulations on what, what she can say and what she can't say over the public airways. Um, but we're gonna talk about a whole life policy because it is a very, very smart way to invest money, you get death benefit from the insurance part, and then you can allow that money to grow. They grow it for you. You're guaranteed a, a percentage of um, dividends, and then plus if the market goes up, you get a share of that. And then when it's time to retire and start taking stuff out, the policy renews itself through the dividends, and then that lump sum you can take out over so many years, right? And that's something that you can totally set up. So, you know, getting out of debt was very important for me because it allowed me then to start planning for my future. I already spent the money, so that was my debt. When I paid that debt off 
instead of taking it and consuming it and rationing it out and whatever, I said, uh oh, I'm planning for the future. So all of that money, every single penny to the penny goes into real estate and my whole life policy. I'm obligated to do that. If not, I lose all that money that I have. So I am on the hook and it makes me be on the hook. And I'm okay with that, right? Because I know when it's time to retire that my family, my husband and I are set that we don't have to worry about anything. We'll have enough money from both of our investments. And the funny thing is, I don't even see it. Like, it's not like I had to make more money to do it. I was already making this money 10, 15 years ago so that I could make those extra payments. All I did was then just reallocate. Instead of giving to the bank, I'm now giving it to real estate in a different bank, which is an insurance company. But um, that's what I'm doing with it. So think about things like that. If you pay off your credit cards, right, or you pay off your mortgage, what are you gonna do with that money? That's not necessarily money that you should spend on yourself. Invest it. Have interest play a role in helping you instead of you helping the banks, right? Because the system is all set up for somebody else. Whoever has it gets more of it. So don't be the person that doesn't have it and then they keep borrowing and begging and you know pleading for more of it when you could be on the opposite side and letting interest work for you. So number one was extra weekly payments. It works. Why does it work also? You're paying it weekly. Okay, you can set this up online to automatically, I'm staying on my cord, to automatically take it out of your account and pay, you know, the credit card or the loan or whatever, okay, pay the bank. When you're doing it weekly instead of monthly, you're then chopping down the principal and make sure you make a note or set it up with them that they are taking it off the principal only, that they're not just adding it. You can pay um, interest whenever, right, monthly. But you want to chip down that principal because that's what the interest is calculated on. So if your principal is coming down extra, 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 then you're going to end up paying less and less and less interest on it. And you're going to also pay it off earlier. Okay? You know, most credit cards, if you're making the minimum payment, it, it'll take you 30 years to pay off a $2,000 you know, credit card. That's ridiculous. And they're charging you 18%. I mean, it's just ridiculous how manipulated we've become. Well, you should have a backup, it's a credit card. No, you don't need it, okay? Make your extra payments. Set it up so that it's weekly and then put on a note in the memo that you know this is for principal only. And you're gonna see that things start snowballing very quickly and you know you can take off years of your mortgage payment, your car payment. I do this with cars all the time. Usually I'll make either double payments or payment and a half every month. And I do that by chipping extra weekly payments, right? Um, and usually you can get it paid off in half the time. And it's easy to do. But let's say that, oh my gosh, you know, something happened at the house and I have to, you know, buy a new water heater or, you know, something broke or a new roof or something. If you can't make that extra payment because you're paying something else, then that's okay too. You're not obligated. You pay your minimum then, and then once things get back to normal, then you can start chipping away. So this is kind of something that, you know, if you have it, use it. Use the time wisely. Use the extra payments wisely, okay? That's number one. Number two is um, biggest interest versus smallest amount. Now, there's two schools for thinking which debt should you pay off first, okay? Which one should you put extra money towards? It's either the smallest amount or it's the amount that has the highest interest rate. I, whatever way you wanna do it is fine. 
This is what I've done, okay? I always take the smallest amount first. I don't care if it's the lowest um, interest rate or not. What I like to do is if I'm making that extra payment, let's say it's um, 100 bucks a week, okay? I know that once I get that smaller one off, paid off, then not only do I have the minimum amount, let's say that was $100, but then I also have the extra payments, which is another $400. So now I have $500 a month. I can then put on the next size loan. Then when that's done, I can combine the two previous loans that I had and put it on the big guy. To me, that's just how it, it, I like to see progress because if I'm chipping away at the small, that the biggest uh, or the loan that has the highest amount of interest, a lot of times that can be the biggest loan and you're not seeing progress. And then, you know, it, it takes a lot of discipline to do this stuff. And if you're not seeing progress on it, then you're going to give up and you're not going to do any of it and you're not going to care. That's not what building prosperity and wealth for your family is. Leaving a legacy for your kids, being able to pay for college, being able to, to retire and, and move to a nice place and, you know, and, and travel. Whatever you want to do is fine, but uh, you, you just need to do something, right? You need to, to start moving in the right direction. For me, I like chipping away at the smallest uh, amount first okay number three is they said that um, the average number of credit cards everyone has is three and there's 189 million credit cards out there in America um, you got to think of what is your number of credit cards okay the maximum you should have are two okay and the only reason you have two is one is business and one is personal because you really can't mix the two, okay? You really have to keep it. It's just, it, it makes it clean, especially for the accountants. If you're ever audited, it always makes it cleaner if you can keep them separate. For my business card, I like airfare miles. So I signed up with a business card and this was like from day one. I think I had this since like I think that was my first business card, um, and it's been 20 years now. Uh, my business card has, you know, and they always want to up the limit for me, and I say, no, I want just this amount so that if I do get in, a, you know, a pinch, that I know I can pay that amount off. But I earn miles, so I can't tell you how many trips I've taken that have cost me zero amount because I also have a timeshare that I don't pay anything, maybe the transfer fee or whatever, but I don't pay anything. And usually the, the business card costs me, I think it's a $55 a year fee or whatever. Okay, it saves me thousands of dollars. We're, we went to Germany last year. Uh, all I had to do was pay for the tour, but we got to fly for free to Europe, free. Uh, this year, we're, or next year we're going to um, Germany again it's not costing me anything. I already got the air, uh, the um, airplane tickets. So you know, personal, you can do that too. You can save money, discovery card, uh, cash back kind of thing. Um, I think Capital One has some cash back options. Do something that you can use that with. Okay, if you like to travel with your family, then you know, is cash back better for you? or is um, airfare miles better for you? See what the reward systems are. And you also have to be careful of what the interest rates are. So you want a lower interest rate, okay? But only have two. Get rid of the, the pennies and the Macy's and the this and the that card. You don't need them, okay? The only reason that I would ever get one is because usually um, I want the deal, you know, oh, we're running a special. If you sign up for this card, you get free this, this, and that. So usually I'll sign up and then I'll give it a few months and then I get rid of it. You could play that game too, but um, you really only need two cards. If you don't have a business, then you only need one card. And you can have a debit card too, um, but that's more like a cash card, right? Um, but 
you only need two. You don't need all this other stuff. Get points, get rewards, put all of your resources into one. It's a very powerful method and I'm telling you, I've been on tons of vacations. Uh, we're going to Mexico too and I think I paid for one of the tickets that I had enough points because I already spent it on um, Germany for next year. But then I still have more points. I still have some left over um, for next year too if we go, go somewhere. So let them build up and use them. That's what they're there for. Number four, what we just talked about, rewards. Number five, this is a big one that I've learned from my dad's side of the family, pay cash. An easy way to save yourself from getting into debt is if you only have this much paper, then you can only spend this much paper, right? Uh, if you're at the restaurant, they're, you know, going to arrest you or make you clean dishes or something, work your meal off if you don't have enough money on you. Pay in cash because then it makes you think, can I afford this? You know, with plastic, you don't think anything of it. I can buy whatever I want and it'll swipe it. But with cash, now you're prioritizing things. Now you're saying... Hmm, do I really need that? Do I really want that? That's going to be 20 bucks. I only have 100 bucks on me. Hmm, is that really worth it to me? Cash helps to bring you back into reality of what you have and what you don't have. And it's okay to not have everything. I'm not the richest person, you know, on earth, right? But I am a multimillionaire. I don't look it, I don't dress it, you would not never know, I drive a Subaru, our house is a nice house, but it's nothing like crazy, you know, uh, you know, I wear sweats and t-shirts and like I said, 10 year old underwear, but I've been very frugal with my money and I'm only in my 40s, so by the time I'm in my 60s, uh, we're going to be talking a substantial amount of wealth that I can pass on to my grandchildren, to my son. And of course, I can then travel and, and do some fun things with the rest of my life, right? You have to make your money a priority, okay? So everybody right now that's watching, raise your right hand. Of course, it looks like it's left hand on here, but it's, this is my right hand. And, and say out loud, I am starting to prioritize my money right now. So today, you're going home. So the World Series is over. They did it last night. Yay, Washington Nationals, right? They won. Woohoo! Guess what? Nothing's going to be on tonight, okay? Tonight, you need to sit down with your spouse after the kids go to bed and sit down and, and look at your budget. And I know, but look at your budget and start planning. Prioritize the money. Where is it going? Can we tweak some things? You know, we're getting towards the end of the year. Now's the time to start planning for 2020. And I do this all the time. It's about this time of year where I get a little antsy about, okay, how am I going to make next year even better than this year? And this year has been pretty good. How can I make it better for next year? Now's the time. You sit down tonight, prioritize your money. What kind of debt do we have? Okay, if we cut this out, can I make an extra month, a weekly payment on this credit card or this loan? Don't think because it, it's a lower thing, a lower interest rate, unless you're buying equipment or something for your business. But if this is personal debt, you need to get rid of that stuff. You need to get rid of that debt, especially cars and, and all that stuff, even houses. Okay, I mean, I only have a 3% mortgage, but you know, I'm still chipping away a little bit at a time. Um, another thing, if you are buying a house, I took out a 15 year mortgage instead of a 30. And it, I think it cost me an extra $300 a week, a month. That was it. It was a very, very small, but the amount of interest that I would pay over the course of 15 more years was outrageous. It almost doubled the actual value of my house. I'll never get that. 
home values will never go double of what they are today. I mean, they'll hopefully just stay steady and you can get your money back, right? When, when it's time to retire and you're ready to move or, or downsize or whatever. Look at your budget and say, hey, look at all these things. How many credit cards do I have? Okay, we're gonna get rid of a bunch. If you have some that have a little bit on it, get rid of them. Hey, I have student loans get rid of them. Whatever the smallest amount is or the highest interest rate, whichever method you believe in, that's fine. I can't argue either way. I just know for me, I like progress. So, and I'm disciplined to chip away at the small one and then use that money, don't spend it. Chip away at the medium one, don't spend that. When that's done, chip away, at, you know, combine everything and chip away at the big one. I have discipline and sometimes people don't. That's okay. But if you follow these little tips that I talked to you about reward systems, get a credit card that has rewards, only have two, a business one and a personal one. If you don't own your own business, get rid of it. You only need one credit card. Then you only have one payment you have to worry about and try to do as much as you can in cash. When you do that, you automatically prioritize the spending that you take. So I hope this helps you guys. Remember, grab a free copy of my book. It's called The Habit Formula at thehabitformulabook.com. In it, you're gonna find all of these tips and tricks that can help make 2020 the best year ever. Now's the time, it's already end of, uh, today's Halloween, so happy Halloween to everybody, but uh, now's the time to start planning for 2020. You only have another month and then, uh, or two months, and then it's done and you should be up and ready to go. So make sure you grab a copy, it's free. Go to thehabitformulabook.com. Also, you can listen to us on iTunes and Spotify. Look for Lunchtime with the Habit Master shows so you don't miss any episodes. Also check out my YouTube and Instagram. Follow me, subscribe, and listen to all the cool stuff, all the extra videos in that, tips and tricks that I have that has worked for me and has literally made me millions. Um, and I know if you, if you do the same things and apply them, it can happen for you too. So that's it for me today. Thanks for watching and let's build good habits together.